Here we go. Seems like we're going to be lucky after all. And? <laughs> Got stuck first in the, in the snag there. Yeah. And we just kept the pressure on. Is it out? And yeah, she came this. Okay, great. Okay, she's coming. <clears throat> Good morning, everybody. Gilbert Foxcroft from, from the Kingfisher. And Robert Kotzer, one of my Protea peg mates from a couple of years ago. We're standing here at the lovely Inanda Dam on a winter's morning. And believe it, I'm in shorts. Robster is still <laughs> in shorts. So, uh, yeah, we can't believe the absolute beautiful temperatures we've got here. And we've got a fish on. So, Robbie is busy playing it. We've got the Daiwa Sensor 12 pound line. And the Crosscast BK5500 and we are introducing today the, the new Delcom Alarms that's just landed in South Africa so we're going to show you guys a little bit of that later on we're also going to be doing a bit of uh, feature finding we're going to be doing spawning, casting, leader knots and there goes the kettle I think I better go and switch that off Here we go. Here we go. The sling is here. In that 13 meters of water. There towards the white buoy. The first thing we do after landing a fish is we break up the net and then we transfer the fish into a retaining sling. That just protects the fins and, and everything. And obviously we don't want the fish to get hurt. He's still a bit feisty. So we need to make 100% sure that that is taken care of. <clears throat> so we break up the net, then we take the retaining sling, basically just guide the fish into the retaining sling, like that, and then 
we just make sure that the fins are flat and we close them up. Okay, just hold it like that, Robbie. No, just open it up for me. Just want to slide the fish out of the net. Just slide the net off. We're just going to go through the zeroing of the scales. Right, the important part is you wet your sling before you transfer the fish into it and then you zero it perfectly. There we go, sling is zeroed. Now it's easy for us to weigh the fish. Every single time with these quarter scales, the beauty is that the scale remains zeroed. So you can go and catch 20, 30, 40 fish and every now and again you can just double check that the, the scale has been, is, is still zeroed. But the nice thing about this is, you know, you don't need to spend extra time in sorting out the weighing operations. <coughs> Right, this one is weighing 19 pounds, 8 ounces. Yeah, 19 pounds, 8 ounces. Nice start, Robster. Right, yo. Robbie, um, turn the fish a little bit more, the, you know, it a little bit my way, yes. So always remember, when putting him down, the fins have got to be flat, yes. Perfect. Right, let's see if we can do a nice water shot. There she goes. There we go. Thanks, a girl. Ice is right, here's the rig that caught the fish. We call it a combination or a combi rig, but it's also a uni rig. So the minute the fish picks up the bait, everything slides away from the hook. So it actually makes the hook nice and proud and it prevents the hook from popping out. And uh, the hook is still very, very sharp. So we can test it on our nail and it doesn't move. So this one is pretty much good to go. We're gonna just dip it again in the quarter goo, the outrageous orange. And believe me, oh, oh it smells so citrusy. Great guts. Obviously this is the same rig that we used to catch that fish earlier on. It's just uh, soaked in the outrageous orange goo and I just brought it with me. So there you can see it. A lovely lovely citrus flavor and it has been doing wonders for us in a number of waters that was a surprise run Actually feels a better one as well. As soon as the line clicks off the grass, it just makes it better. Again, we've got the cross cost BK 5500 reel loaded with 12 pound Daiwa sensor line. And um, here I've got the, the Mission DF 12 foot 3.5 pound Tesco rod. Um, one of these days, these are going to be upgraded to the to the power mesh ones that we are currently marketing all across the country. And uh, there's some really, really new, nice new items coming through. So hopefully, before the end of the session, we will have you guys see how the new stuff look like. So uh, let's hold thumbs for that.
Right, we lost a fish earlier on and this is the remnants of what I can possibly describe as the biggest mess you've ever seen. Now this is what we call irresponsible people. Now using a ski rope and a, a concrete block that is so heavy that you can barely lift it up with a, with a, with a, with a ski rope and then leave it in the water for other people to get snagged on is just so irresponsible. I mean, you can see the amount of lines around here. So just imagine how many f fish have been lost. Look here, this is such a mess. And there's a, yeah, there's a rig as well yeah. with a plastic pip still on. Guys, if you, if you fish, please, when you're done with your session, remove your markers. It just makes for safer fishing. If, if a guy was fishing a very large hook with pretty much unbreakable end tackle then that fish would end up being tethered and he will end up dying there and that is just not something that we want in our lakes this is such a pristine water to have all of this rubbish in one swim is just not good Working on the crank again. 8.875. Byron, um, I want you to talk us through your safety operations, what you do when yeah. you treat the fish. I'm going to grab the camera while you talk it through. We'll quickly take some photographs and then the viewers out there can also see how we take the photographs and how we release the fish. But well done. Thank you very much. Hi guys, uh, Byron from the Kingfisher group. I just want to show you guys regarding our carp safety. As you can see the fish is in a uh, cradle that I built myself. Um, it holds the water so the fish um, gets oxygen all the time. And it's safe, can't drop it on the, in, on the ground, it's already in the water. Let me just get this loose. We just successfully weighed it. It was uh, 8.85 kilograms. Okay, so the first of all, I'm use, making use of the uh, quarter propolis treatment. It's a fantastic product. You first dry the wound a bit, so you just gently lift the head. Okay, so just gently. It was caught in the side. It actually just shows you how little the crank uh, damage the crank makes because I can't even find where the hook hole is. There we go. Okay, so you just pat to dry a bit. And then I take the quarter propolis, I just drop a drop or two, as you can see there. Give it a chance to settle. And then just add some water, which helps to solidify the gel and make a, a gel. And then it's safe to put it back. As you can see, now that it's even in the water, it still stays. Take off all the sharp objects. Two tiger nuts dipped in, um, in a goo and critically balanced with a pink maize. Okay, I'm gonna just take a portrait shot. Just uh, lift the head a little bit, drop the tail a little bit. Okay, then a water shot. Was this deep enough? Yeah. Perfect. Cool. Okay, turn a little bit this way, bring the fish up a bit, and then drop slightly. Myself? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> okay, turn a little bit. Okay, lift the head and drop the tail a bit. 
<laughs> you just get this one. Right. Oh my goodness, you're gonna love this. Byron, you're gonna love it, mate. Oh, this is stunning. Guys. Okay, we had another fish sacked. It's, uh, it's been sacked for about 10 to 15 minutes. I don't like sacking your fish for more than an hour. Um, but we, we were a bit busy with the rods. So, to take some pics for carp safety, we take it from the carp sack back into a waist link, which I use to carry it to the cradle. Um, just for that extra bit of carp safety. Put the carp sacks in and then make sure all the fins are nicely tucked away when you pull them up. And one thing I've noticed a lot of oaks don't close the zips. Close your zips. Fish tend to slip out when you least expect it in the front. How much was this one? Uh, this was 12.75. Beautiful. Safely remove it out of the corp sack. It helps having water in the cradle because you can just slip it up. You don't have to lift the fish. Already treated her. So now she should be lively now. This one was 12.75 and I caught um, her on a stack of three kaboomilis with a yellow fake maize. Critically balanced once again. Feed was tiger nuts, hemp and kaboomilis. Good. Well, that brings us to the end of a great couple of days, call it winter, at Inanda Dam. We did quite a bit of footage, shot quite a few video clips on rods and reels and rigs and all those nice things about carp angling. And then to top it all off, Byron had a couple of beautiful fish and you'll, you'll, you'll definitely agree with me that Inanda Dam has got some really beautiful wonders that's, that's completely untapped. I think there's some monster fish in this, in this lake. And uh, well, last year at the, on the Yirgano Salveer show, we had in four days 45 runs, landed 43 carp and two catfish. And this time around, Inanda gave me carrots. And uh, yeah, it's not nice to admit it, but uh, I have to, I have to concede defeat. So, but at least the other guys had uh, great catches. Robert had a beautiful fish right at the beginning, and we thought, wow, it's going to kick off now. Then I lost a fish in a in a really terrible snag with lots of ski ropes and stuff, which we showed you guys. And then Byron, where he was sitting, had a couple of smallish fish. And then he moved off and created a, a, a new area on a point and it just happened for him. Uh, luckily he had some marginal areas so he could drop the lines in three meters of water. We just didn't have three meters of water here so it, it just shows you that although this dam has got some really really incredible fish you still got to no go and find them and this time of the year if I have to come around this time again, 
I'm gonna go right through to that bay because that's just a natural area where the fish are gonna be patrolling but I hope you enjoyed it and uh, we're gonna definitely try and do something like this very soon